Hello everyone, the Lord be with you. Let's begin with a prayer. Thank you God for the promise of your constant love and for the hope it brings to my life. Amen. Well, I'm off on a new journey here. I'm going to make some video reflections and they're going to have an Ignatian twist. But I thought the best place to start would be to give you a little bit of background as to why I really love the Ignatian approach to spirituality. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why this fits me so well. I think I always had a long-standing desire to know more about God, to be closer to God. But I think I was really very timid and shy about letting anybody know that. I can remember being at St George's many, many years ago now when the church army came and made a presentation. And at the end of the presentation they said, is there anybody here who would like us to come and pray with them? I was bursting to have someone come and pray with me, but I was far too timid and shy. So I left with an opportunity missed. I think back there were many times, and the examples don't readily come to mind, but of opportunities where I wanted to know more and I wanted to ask questions. But I think I was a little bit like that good Anglican who sat quietly in the pews and really didn't want to draw attention to myself. I remember when the greeting of peace came, I loathed that at the beginning. Don't look at me, don't talk to me. Don't expect me to know what to do. Don't expect me to be able to give in this situation. I've just come here in order to to listen and experience, but I don't want anything else. But at the same time, I did want a whole lot more. So I have had a long-standing wish to be nearer to God, and that only became deeper when I started theological study. When you embark on this journey, you don't necessarily need to be an ordination candidate, but when you have a serious idea about wanting to know more about God, you can seek out a spiritual director. Now I say to the children at school, it's like me having a coach. They understand a basketball coach or a swimming coach. Well, I say I have a spiritual coach. And I've had three spiritual coaches over my time. And I've attended um, Campion in Kew and had some wonderful experiences there. After a while of working with my second spiritual director, she said to me, have you ever considered making the spiritual exercises? I had no idea what she was talking about. I knew nothing about them and she handed me a bunch of material leaflets giving me an explanation of what the exercises were about and how they could be undertaken and I began to read and I still remember this one particular line and it was directly from Ignatius and he said God began to teach me like a school teacher teaches a pupil. And that was it. I was hooked. I didn't need to read one more line. I went back next week and I said, I want to do this. Why? She said, here it is. Here's the explanation. I want to be taught. So I started out on the spiritual exercises. They can be taken in two different ways. Many Jesuits, as you may have heard, and other people, make a 30-something day retreat. It's all in one concentrated period of time. They meet daily with the spiritual director and work through the materials for the remainder of the day, and they're done with it in a, uh, a little over a month. In my case, I did what's called the retreat in everyday life. So I met with a spiritual director once a week, for 30-something weeks over the year. We spaced it out so that 
both she and I could have a little bit of a holiday somewhere along the line. And I would meet her one hour in the week and she would then give me the very carefully structured materials, all drawn from Ignatius himself and his spiritual writings, though adapted and changed over many, many years, because Ignatius lived a long time ago. So I'm going to jump from that little explanation of how I did the exercises as a retreat in everyday life. It suited me wonderfully well because I felt I had lots of time to go in and out of ordinary life, reflecting on what I was learning, taking it back into the real world, mulling it over, going back again. Ignatius himself, where did he come by all this wonderful inspiration and a methodology for teaching people a way of coming closer to God? Well, any of you who want to Google or put any other um, form of search engine to work can put in Ignatius of Loyola and you will find that he was a Spaniard and he lived a very long time ago. He was a man who as a young man dreamed of chivalry and um, all of the sorts of intriguing and exciting things that young men want to do going off to battle and it was in the year 1521 that he was involved with one such battle and they were fighting the French I see here. In 1521 he was 30 years old and his leg was shattered below the knee by a cannonball. So he had a period of extended convalescence. He was taken to a castle nearby and there he had a lot of time when he was pretty much incapacitated. He had to stay put. Poor old Ignatius apparently walked with a limp for the rest of his life. He wanted to read while he was there and there were no books of excitement and adventure and chivalry, the things that he was really interested in. The one book that they could come up with in the place where he was staying was a book that was on um, the saints. Christ and his saints. And he read it over and over and in depth apparently and it had a profound effect on him because he said that as he read he found that something in him changed his nature his essence was changed he became a different kind of person then when he put the book aside he found that his daydreams were what he considered to be um, wasteful, lacklustre, uninspiring, and he'd go back to the saints and find that he was a different person when he focused on their lives. One of the two important facets of experience that Ignatius came to talk about is called consolation. And its opposite is desolation. And I suppose those two contrasting feelings could be sheeted right back home to his original experience of time that was spent in growth and time that felt wasted. Ignatius developed a whole methodology for experiencing the presence of God. One of his famous um, teachings is about the examine. And the examine is a time for pausing and coming to conscious awareness of what has happened in the preceding hours. People like to do the examine at different times in the day. They might do it twice, middle of the day, end of the day. They might do it three times. 
But the whole idea is that while we go about our daily work, we can come back to this moment of focus in the present and to consider what's happened over a period of time. Ignatius says somewhere in his writings, I'm not exactly sure where, but if any other kind of prayer needs to be um, set aside for the day because the tasks of the day are, are so extreme, the one thing that anybody following his rule should not avoid is the examine. I have to admit that there are times when I don't do the examine. Um, I'm much more in rhythm with morning and evening prayer when I find I spend my time there. But I think it is a wonderful way, in my experience, of getting you into the present moment. And I think that's one of the things that I've so enjoyed about Ignatian spirituality. And that is that it can move me out of my head where I'm thinking and um, perhaps constantly ruminating and planning and um, assessing and so on, analysing. But the moment of the examine takes us into the presence of God and gets us to stay there. And as well as that, not to make judgments about our shortcomings, what we have and haven't done perhaps, but to be in the presence of God and know that as a loving presence of God. Pretty exciting stuff, if you ask me. So, I took to the Ignatian way of thinking and experiencing quite quickly. I did hit a few roadblocks and I'll talk about those as we get a little further into our reflecting time um, but with skillful help uh, I was able to learn how to see those roadblocks in different ways. Now yesterday I, I dragged out a huge box of materials that I'd put together over my year of retreat and I'm going to see if I can get myself to start a little journal again. And if you want to follow these, you might like to do something similar. Just jot down what you think and feel without judgment as um, I offer you some things to think about. When I looked at the date on all this material, I did it in 2015. I can't believe it. In some ways that seems so long ago and yet in some ways it's remarkably fresh because that movement into the moment through the examine, through the reflection is something that I still hold terribly closely. It just is for me life-giving. So I hope that you might come with me now and then if it suits you as I offer some little reflections, we'll make this an introductory sort of process. Please do email me if there are things you'd like to talk about in relation to what I share with you. And let's hope that God's with us as we journey together. So let me close with a prayer. Loving God, we ask that you come with us as I share my thoughts and reflections on some of my adventure in learning through Ignatius' wonderful, deep understanding of human experience. Encourage those who might like to dip their toe in the water. Walk with them. Make them feel comfortable and at home. We look forward to time spent together. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. So that's my little introduction. I'll say farewell and see you next time with a specific reflection. The Lord be with you.